Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Honey Badger with Bubbler and Honey Stand Dab of the Day with Diamonds. Hello, everybody. Today is Saturday. Thanks for joining me. As always, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, and comment. Let's get started with today's topic. How many of you out there have ever had a panic attack? Most of us, if not all of us. It's commonly described as a sensation of intense fear that can trigger physical and emotional response. Panic attacks can occur even when there is no danger or immediate threat. There are a number of strategies that can be used to help us cope with a panic attack. First, we want to look at what are the symptoms of a panic attack. It can be a terrifying experience. I had one a couple years ago. I was driving thought I was going to have a car accident, having a heart attack, I thought. They can begin suddenly and with, without warning. The symptoms are intense, and they can overwhelm the calmest and most rational person. Some of the symptoms, so you can recognize it when it's on its way, are as follows. Tingling, numb fingers, hands, or lips. Increased heart rate and breathing rate. Dripping wet perspiration for no reason could have heart palpitations and difficulty catching your breath, dizzy, maybe even feel like you can't breathe, hyperventilation, nausea, chest pains, got to go to the bathroom, pressure in your chest, feeling of doom and terror, and feeling that you've lost all control. The good news is we know the symptoms. The great news is it only lasts between 5 and 20 minutes. Some of the symptoms can last longer. But unfortunately, the thing we have to watch out for with panic attacks is one panic attack can trigger another panic attack. So, the good news. While the symptoms may seem terrifying, it might, it might be comforting to know that a panic attack will not cause a heart attack or physical harm. How do we deal with these horrible feelings? Well, a couple ways. First way is to focus on your breathing. If you're in a car, pull over immediately. If you're in a, you know, operating machine, stop doing it immediately. And you have to become in contact with what's happening. You're going to get the chest pain. You're going to get the breathing. You're going to get the dizziness. All this is going to happen. So you want to slow that breathing down. You want to try to use square breathing we talked about to regulate your oxygen level. You want to try to use grounding techniques like mindfulness. And maybe you do this in a seated position. Take some breaths before you do it. And do the following. Note five things that you see. I see a window, a microphone, a dab tool, papers. Note four things you can touch. Note three things you can hear. Note two things you can smell. Note one thing you can taste. It's called 54321 exercise. And it can be done anywhere. Anywhere doing anything. And it helps ground us and bring us back to the present moment. And it's a good distraction when you begin to feel anxious and panic. Remember to reassure yourself. Repeating comforting and reassuring statements to yourself can really help calm the mind and body, particularly if you're alone during a panic attack. So some of the things you want to tell yourself might be things like this. I'm in a panic attack. It feels scary, but it's not going to cause me any permanent harm. The horrible sensation is temporary and it's going to soon pass. I am safe. I don't need to run away. If I calm down, the symptoms will stop. I can breathe. There's nothing stopping me from breathing. And I've never experienced a heart attack. The sensation is simply caused by high levels of anxiety. And this can help you relax your muscles. Begin with your toes and end with your ears and the tip of the nose because it's difficult to focus on techniques like I'm talking about in the heat of the panic attack. 
if you've never tried it before. So what you want to do is do these things today. Do them a few times a week when you're not having a panic attack. So that when you have the panic attack, it's an old friend that you're bringing out. And speaking of old friends, if you're having a panic attack when you're in the middle, reach out to someone. It, you got to alleviate the fear you're in and try to get to someone. Talk to someone. You know, panic attacks occur for little or no reason for most people. And your family member or friend or contact will be able to tell you and reassure you there's nothing really happening. Okay? It'll soothe you. So, that's how you deal with a panic attack. Well, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. How might we prevent one? There's no fail-safe way to prevent one. There, research shows that some lifestyle changes and some of the things you do in life might reduce or decrease the frequency and severity of panic attacks, but simple ways to reduce them and prevent them might be the following. Get enough sleep every night, number one. Eat as well as you can. Try not to smoke cigarettes. Try. And try to watch caffeine. Try to watch the alcohol consumption. I know many people like it, but try. They even say we should stay away from this stuff. But exercise can help. Just walking and trying to pick and remove as much stress from your life as possible. Even if it's meaning a less demanding job from a stress standpoint or stepping back from unhealthy relationships. Maybe you want to have a good therapy session or three. So the question is, do you have what's called panic disorder? Well, I know I do, okay? Panic disorder means you have frequent panic attacks and extreme anxiety on a regular basis, not reflecting actual life. Panic disorder can result in a sufferer beginning to avoid certain situations or events because they trigger and they fear the trigger of a panic attack. It can be extremely debilitating on your life. So if you are having multiple panic attacks and severe anxiety, please seek help. You might have panic disorder. Get in touch with your general practitioner. Make sure you get to somebody you can talk to professionally. Don't just watch this and say, oh, I've got panic disorder and forget about it, please. So I hope I've helped everybody because what we need to do, here's how it works, is you need to recognize the symptoms, what it is, <clears throat> make sure you identify that you're in a panic attack, and then there are things that you now have hopefully available to you, we talked about, that you can do to reduce the severity and the longevity of your panic attack. As always, if this information and this video helped you or you enjoy it, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, and comment. This has been The Real Senior Stoner. Talking about panic attacks, and I hate to say it, we all know what they are. Well, now we all know how to deal with them. Hope you have a great day. Let's take our dab. Cheers, everybody. sweet. You all have a great day and thanks for joining me for the dab of the day today. Cheers, everybody.